Carson Palmer is uh, sticking with us for another segment here, courtesy of FedEx. And joining us as well now, my compadre from the NFL Network, NFL Media Group, NFL Game Day Morning, mm-hmm. part of our draft mm-hmm. coverage tonight. He'll be hanging out with Steve Smith Sr. and also with Troy Aikman. So come say hi when Steve's on the set. Yeah, and I brought, Steve Mariucci. I brought my tie as well, Rich. And I don't know what you guys are a little underdressed for well, this. Well, no, this but is this casual is, Thursday. This, yeah, it's a casual Thursday. Yeah. I like that. But you, I mean, supposed to be Friday. Mooch, yeah. Mooch, like, why are you all suited and booted? I gotta you're not do on the, the, but you're not on the air for another four hours. Like, I make the differ. Like I got to do the pregame show. Rich. I'm on that too. What? I'm on that too. I thought we were on the air like at like one o'clock or something. Uh, are you really? You're. I, I, yeah. I'm, I don't know. I'm working today, Rich. I don't know what you're doing. <laughs> <laughs> hey, buddy. I, I will say this. Yes. I didn't go over to that experience. I just came right, right, straight through here. Yeah. And you know, I know Jerry Jones wants to double the attendance from Philadelphia yes, last he does. year, a couple hundred thousand, right? Yeah. But you know what, Dallas fans, you better show up because you need. Right now, I'm just looking out here. Um, there's a lot, but Philly was like tight sardines you i know move you got you got some catching up to do well, look at mooch calling out the people look at these of dallas. Cleveland browns fans what do you think they get baker mayfield tonight steve gosh that's the that's the word there's every day things change do you right? believe that though do you believe that i don't know what to believe anymore <laughs> i don't I, I don't believe it mm. i think it's a smoke screen i think there's a lot of poker playing going on in the last week or two and yeah, I, I, I don't, and I know Baker Mayfield. I like the kid. He's going to get drafted high. I right. hope he has a great career. I don't think they're going to do that. Number one, maybe I'm wrong. But uh, we were just talking with Carson. There was no intrigue with you, right? There was no. I mean, was there any point in time you thought you were not going to go to the Cincinnati Bengals back in the? No, day? I mean, I, I, thinking back, I, as soon as we played in the Orange Bowl, I felt yeah. like the talk had already started, and and it, it was pretty much a done deal, and nothing ever really changed throughout the process for me yeah well you know it was different your year because you signed and agreed with the Bengals before the draft mm-hmm. did you didn't you have a contract I signed i did H- how many days before the draft so i flew from california the draft was on Saturday. i flew from california to ohio probably on wednesday or thursday and, and did the deal signed the deal met everybody did the tour did all that stuff and then flew from from ohio to new york and really had a good time in new york because oh. there's no stress okay. I, knew, I already knew what was okay. going on family friends were there um and then so the draft happens and every player goes their which way wherever they get drafted they head to that city and yeah. they do the media tour so i'd already done the media tour i'd already signed the contract so i got to stay in new york and have a great long weekend did you? with my friends and family in new york it was great great well i remember that very well because i was in detroit then yes. so we had the next pick in the draft so we had all that time really essentially other than you we had we had the pick of the litter right well you had the pick of whichever wide receiver matt millen wanted you to take steve and we took this michigan <laughs> state guy right <laughs> charles rogers you remember that oh that's but, right charles uh, rogers I know did. And then wasn't there another good receiver in that draft named okay uh, andre johnson <laughs> <laughs> Stop. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> now, I'm just trying to figure the timeline. Uh, Carson, you were too young to be on the Cal radar screen, right? When you were at Cal? He was probably Mooch? locked in over at SC from day one. Right. What, uh, what year did you did you go I, to SC? You I the got year? there in 98. Uh, you were yeah, already gone. I was gone. I had a recruit you to get were, to Cal. You were in San Fran. Yeah, I was. I was time, at right? Cal at '96. Okay. So you were on our on our on our uh, recruiting board as a youngster. Okay. Rancho Santa Margarita. That's right, baby. The Eagles. Well, what do you think, Carson, of this conversation that we're constantly having about putting uh, a college football style RPOs into into uh, the National Football mm-hmm. League and the, the the transferring of of power, if you will, from <clears throat> quarterbacks like someone like yourself, tall, big arm guy, to people like Baker Mayfield and obviously Lamar Jackson tonight. Uh, what, do you think that that is going to be the future of the NFL and quarterbacks like you will have uh, fewer and fewer opportunities? I don't think it's the future. It's a couple things worry me. One, I would not want Baker in that system. He's not a good enough runner. I don't think you would want him running it half the time and throwing it the other half when, when that play call it comes up. But Lamar can absolutely do it but his aggressiveness and the style of runner he is Mm -hmm. i don't like it at all he's a physical runner he lowers his shoulder he lowers his head he doesn't slide he doesn't get down he takes a punish he gives a punishing 
or a ten, uh, gives a punishment, but also takes a punishment. At, at this next level, when he's 215 pounds and he's getting hit by 240 and 250 pound guys, I don't think that translates well for you know for him having a, a nice, long, healthy career. So I worry about that. A guy like Russell Wilson, who is so sneaky and savvy and gets down and slides and doesn't you know doesn't take those hits, I think it's perfect for his style of running ability, but not for Baker. And and Lamar is probably the best runner we've seen since Mike Vick come out. But Lamar runs different. Lamar takes hits. Lamar puts his shoulder into linebackers. In the NFL, that's just a bad. That's a bad recipe. Yeah. What if if I if I were taking Lamar and he's going to be on a team, okay? I would make cut ups. I would make a cut up of Russell Wilson doing exactly what you just said, Carson, protecting himself, sliding early getting out of bounds, throwing the ball away, all of those things to stay alive, all right? And <laughs> stay I, alive. And I would also make a cut-up of uh, Robert Griffin the third. Okay? Right, RG3. RG3 had a heck of a rookie year. He survived that year, but, boy, it, it, it was he was taking a lot of hits. He got hit so many times because he was trying to be that tough guy. Uh, and, and trying to get that extra yard and all that, and he didn't survive health-wise. Remember he took that hit from Haloti Nada, uh. where he was on the sidelines taking on the Ravens, and he got blown up by Haloti Nada when he, he could have easily avoided it just taking one step to his left. And it got to the point where even Obama was telling RG3 yeah. to get out of bounds. Yeah. At yeah. one point, the leader of the free world started chiming in to because, help save Because RG3. it was obvious to everybody, you if you want to play in this league, you got to darn well protect yourself, please. Right. Otherwise, you're going to be watching on Sundays from your couch. And so that's what so that's what I would do. Lamar, you can go this way or you can go this way. You decide how long you want to play. But that's so hard to coach. That that innate ability for him to he's running powers and traps in college and coming downhill and and to then tell a kid that that has had so much success, you need to change the way you run the ball. It's just you can't coach that that aggressiveness, that <laughs> that innate ability to get in the get in the middle of the hole and pick a guy and put your head in the middle of his chest and run him over. It's just so hard to then say, okay, now you're in the NFL. Now you have to slide. That's a totally different mentality. That's a totally different way of playing the game. That's what worries me so much about Lamar is you just can't you, – you can show him a ton of cut-ups, but at the end of the day when he's in the game in the heat of the moment, he's going to naturally revert back to I'm going to lower my shoulder. And you're putting your shoulder into into guys that are weighing 25, 35, 45 pounds more than you. That's – there's issues there durability-wise. Well, interesting that, that uh, Carson Palmer and Steve Mariucci you together for a couple more minutes, and then Mooch, you're going to hang here for the rest of the hour. Um, they might, uh, you know, Lamar might not have to have cut-ups made of RG3. He might just have to turn to his right or left in the quarterback room. Baltimore. Mike Mayock thinks that the Ravens are going to be the team that takes him off the board tonight at 16. Do you think that would be a, an interesting fit? Like, I guess... Any place that takes him is going to have to. I, 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 I loved watching him play. He, he, you can't stop watching his film. He is right. so dynamic and so explosive and such a better athlete than everybody around him on the field. But at the same time, I don't want to see him doing that in the NFL. I want to see him throw the ball. And every once well, in a while, I think he does too. He keeps saying that I'm not a runner. He, didn't, he refused to even run a 40-yard dash at his pro day. Yeah, but he won the Heisman running the football and he, and he wanted throwing it but he took off and ran and did beat you, people with his legs who did you vote for the Heisman this for year? him oh <laughs> again this year yeah this year I voted for Baker this year you did but I voted for him last year um do you know Carson how many uh, a career rushing yards you had in the National <laughs> Football League <laughs> haven't you asked me this one time I may have before? I may have but I'm bringing it it's, it's oh, an oldie but a goodie to bring it back again I've been I've been hitting the let's see who so let's see who can get it Price is Right rules okay closest <laughs> without going over Steve Mariucci and Carson Palmer <laughs> Carson, you're first. How many career rushing yards? More than Mooch's. Stop. Mooch, how many career rushing no, yards? No, if you you're negative, a... then I win. I'm zero. So <laughs> I might be negative. I, yeah. I hope I'm not negative. I'm going to say. You're not negative. You've, you've, got, say... you've, got, you've got a career amount of positive rushing yards here. Yeah, you know why? 14. 14 what? Touchdowns? <laughs> rushing yards. No. No, no, no. Come on now. Am I career rushing digits? yards. Am I not double digits? Is you're, it eight? No. You're, come on. You're, you've got Mooch. So do uh, sacks take away? No, no, no. no. Oh. We're not doing See, that. See, in college it does. No pros, sacks. Yeah. sacks are, no, 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 no. Sacks are against your pass. You had, you in, had, right. you okay. had, let's just, you had 301 career rushing attempts. I don't believe it. That's a true story. Okay. Those, Those are quarterback sacks sneaks. Count? Hey, man, you had 179 rushing attempts as a Bengal. Okay. 
So, Respectable, isn't it? But that's it's like a rushing 80, attempt, so figure it out. Quarterback sneaks, Rich. <laughs> and, right? <laughs> all right, 474 rushing yards. Uh, career. 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 Shocking. Averaging 1.6 yards per carry. Hey, it's not That's negative. what I'm talking about. It's not negative. <laughs> Almost one-fifth of a first down every time you decided Can to I tuck it. Can I defend myself real quick because we're all having fun with this and how <laughs> slow I am? I bet I ran a faster – I could run a 40. Okay. I, I know I was faster than you. Well, I, but I bet I ran goes. faster than. Do you have a, a, a stat guy? Where's your? We 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 can. Confer- what do you want to know? What you ran a forty yard dash I ran at the a combine? Forty at like four six eight. Here, you did. Uh, here you go, Chris. Figure that out. We could. Do, we, so do, do, I, do, I think I th- at the combine. Can we not talk about rushing yards? Can we That's talk about fast, man? Can we Speed? talk about forty. Yeah, sure. I yeah. could at least run a forty. You ran a four what at the combine? Six eight six nine four six four, five. Six, four, six, five. Wow! Boom. Closest without going Blazer. over. I like Blazer. it. That's awesome. That's awesome. I had no <laughs> idea. Going over. There you go. Uh, Damn. So 413 yards rushing. 470 it's going up. 470. Yeah. Oh, four, How many four, years? Six, eight. 15. By so the way. In, so in 15 years, you only had 470 yards more rushing than me. By the <laughs> way, you 15 years. <laughs> by the way, you're, you're only like, two one hundredths of a second slower than Larry Fitzgerald's 40. Are you aware of that? Can we, is this being taped? Yeah, I'm we could send that, that to Lap. You ran a 463. Damn, Carson Palmer. Man. You should have ran a little bit more. Where are you on the Heisman? Hey, last one for you. Are you are you interested in getting in the media? I'm interested in a lot of different things. Okay. Um, post, post-playing post career? Yeah, I've, I've, it's something I'm looking at, and I've been looking at a bunch of different stuff. Okay. I'm, what I'm trying not to do is make a decision. I, I kind of told my wife and my kids. It give me six months to kind of. I've just been listening and and learning and and vetting. Yes. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm taking my sweet time to figure out what's next. Okay. Well, it's so great maybe. to see you. It's great to see you. Great to see you. Let Thanks me know. Hey, me. let me know if I'm ever going to look to my left and my right in my room I, anytime, Carson. Will yeah. you move to Idaho so that I don't have to travel? Uh, I, as you know, my wife and I love going to Idaho. We love it. We loved it when you came on our podcast. Yeah. Uh, I'll see you when I see you. <laughs> Carson Palmer. We're on in Idaho all the time. It's beautiful up there. Yeah, Good is. to see you. Carson Palmer here, part of FedEx. Good to see you. Steve Mariucci, don't you dare move. It's me and Mooch when we come back in 60 seconds here from the NFL Experience at the draft. You're listening to The Rich Eisen Show. All right, we are back here at the uh, Courtyard Hotel's experience at the NFL draft. More and more fans are coming uh, to say hello to us. It's great always to... <laughs> To see them, uh, Dak Prescott's going to be stopping by later. Yeah. Not on our show, but he's going to be stopping by later. I think he's going to be very popular. Yep. Uh, Steve Mariucci equally is popular right now. That's here. right, right here in the uh, Metroplex. So you are um, in that draft room with Cleveland tonight. You are the coach of the Cleveland Browns. I'm making you the coach of the Cleveland Browns. <clears throat> what do you tell John Dorsey before he pulls the trigger? What do you say? Help me. <laughs> help me help you. <laughs> so, and I know both of these guys pretty darn well. I was with uh, John Dorsey in Green Bay when yes. I was a coach. He was over there on the West Wing with uh, Ron Wolf's guys. Sure. Well, and he was an Andy Reid guy, as we all know, for many, many and, and, and then, And then uh, Hugh Jackson was my offensive coordinator at Cal. So we go way back, too. So these guys are both very competent in what they do. Right. And they're very secretive about what they're going to do, too. I mean, I don't even know if people in the building know what they're going to do so yet. So what do you see is what, like? You've got Jarvis Landry, and you've got um, you've got uh, Josh Gordon. What do you? What do you? Which is the quarterback you think is the quarterback you? If you were the coach, Steve Mariucci, you would push for. Well, I would. So they have a quarterback in place now with Tyrod Taylor. Yes, okay, sir. To hold down the fort. And that guy led Buffalo now to the playoffs. And that's not an easy task. Why are you not answering my question? So, which means that they can draft a guy. I will. I'll get to it. <laughs> that can, I, I hope he can sit around. You watch Tyrod be a pro. Yes. You might not have the same playing style and athleticism as Tyrod, but you watch him prepare. You watch him practice. You yes. watch talk about defenses and blitzes and all of that sort of thing. So hopefully this youngster won't have to play like Deshaun Kaiser did last year. Yes. So get, you know, cut to the chase. I would take the most complete quarterback in the draft. To me, it's Sam Darn- Darnold. It's, it's from SC, where Carson Palmer was from. Right. Um, 
he doesn't have the strongest arm of the group. Let's let's talk about the big five if you want to include right Lamar Jackson. Yes. He doesn't. Sam Darnold doesn't have the strongest arm. Josh Allen does. He doesn't have the best mobility, but he has good mobility. He's uh, you know he the, the nicks on him. You know he gets a little sloppy with the ball at times and turns it over. You know you got to coach him up to keep two hands on the ball and protect it and himself. But but I think he's probably very ready to do this, and he's that kind of guy. You know what? I had some, and, and I think it's a fit. Maybe we use that that term a little bit too loosely sometimes. Right. What's a fit mean? What's a fit? Right. Well, you know, I talked to the, when we were doing this last year. There were two quarterbacks, right? Yes. Goff and Wentz. Um. In talking to their to their people, they asked, "What do you think, Mooch? What's the evaluation?" And it's part of it's the evaluation of what they can do and what they can't do, but the other part of it's a fit. And I told Les Snead, I said, Les, here's my thought. I said the fit for 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 the Rams in LA is Jared Goff because he's a California kid. Right. And he's and I think I think the fit will be good. I think he'll be well received. I think it I think he'll be, you know, comfortable there and, and at home because he is at home. Played at Marine Catholic and then at Cal. All right. And then I said for Carson Wentz, who I love. He's kind of a blue-collar guy, a tough guy from North Dakota State. That fit to be with those Eagles in that fan base and in that environment, I think that's a good fit too. And and if you switched them, if you switched them, they would have been successful, I think. Sure. You know, but it seemed to be a good fit. So so to me, the Cleveland Browns and Sam Darnold is a good fit. I would go that way. And you would say that to you would say that to John Dorsey. You'd Absolutely. Okay. I'll call him right now if you want me. To. If, what do you say uh, about the Mayfield Rosen? Choice that the Jets are. That's a harder one for me because I don't know if I don't know what the best fit in New York is. Well, you've hired Jeremy Bates as your quarterbacks coach and your offensive coordinator. Because because Baker Mayfield and Josh Rosen are two different. This this is apples and oranges now. But you know the offense that Bates runs and the type of coach that he is. I do, and he's a good coach, but he's going to have to be a flexible coach. And I think that's the trend right now. I think if you spend a lot of money on a type of quarterback, right, you've got to run. An offense that he can be proficient at, all right, and you change your ways a little bit if you need to, and we saw that with the Eagles and in, in, in uh, Nick Foles running more of his Chip Kelly stuff that he was good at, and I think coaches are going to learn from that. You know, when I was coaching, it was going to be I like the West Coast offense, and you better learn it or get out. I'm going to get somebody else that can run it, mm-hmm. sort of. You know, yeah. Um, but I think now if there's an athletic quarterback or a smaller quarterback like Baker Mayfield, you better adjust your offense accordingly. Otherwise, you what do you want to bust? you want to coach a bust? Or do you want to coach somebody that can do what you do? All right. Uh, I want to take a break, come back in my last segment with you before I send you uh, to the NFL Network compound uh, fully dressed way too early. Um, I do want to hit you up on uh, what you think the evaluation of Josh Allen might be right now. Yeah. Uh, what you as a coach, if you fell in love with a guy like this, might be doing. Um, and also just your history of being in a draft room. I want I want a good story of an argument or a big moment or something. <laughs> I'm thinking. Uh, and I, I promise you I'm not going to ask you for the Giovanni Carmazzi story. I just, <laughs> he just I, did. I just did that. Actually. Or Jim Druckenmiller. Oh. Druck. I love Druck. <laughs> I, love, I can tell you a Druck story. <laughs> Can you tell us that one? Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, okay, very good. That's next here on the Rich Eisen Show. Yes. You're listening to the Rich Eisen Show. Okay, we are back here live at the NFL Draft. I want to tell you about Steve Mariucci's favorite pillow, my pillow. Did you bring one on the road, Steve? No, but I, I learned that they have a travel little pillow that yes. I'm going to put in my bag next time. We call them Go Anywhere pillows, and you can get two of those with two My Pillow premium pillows, 40% off of them. It's the four pack special when you go to mypillow.com and you put my name, Rich, in the promo code spot when you click on the radio listener special tab. So go to MyPillow.com, Radio Listener Special tab, put in the promo code RICH, and you get the four-pack special. Uh, You love these pillows. I'm going to do it. Now, did you get freebies uh, when you came on my show in Minnesota? No, Rich, I haven't had a three-night stay at Courtyard or a a pillow (laughs) yet, and I've been doing this how long now? No, you have. Come on. I know. How about a pillow? I got your back. I got your back. Uh, All right. I've got got about five and change left. I want to get all this in. (laughs) Um, what do you think is going down in the uh, draft room of any coach who loves Josh Allen right now? Ugh. I mean, everybody loves him. 
And so this news that broke is, is uh, it's very interesting, very crazy. Obviously, it's very so, difficult to try and figure out what to make of it. Yeah, I know it. And it's something that 20... happened when he was, what, a freshman in high school or something it, like that? It, it goes back. So so if, if it's somebody that I, I, I'm interested in taking, which there are several teams that would love him, um, you start making phone calls because this is new news. It's, this didn't surface. Until last night. And so um, you start making phone calls and, and try to find out from coaches, teammates, high school friends, secretaries, whoever, right. start talking to as many people. Did this ever show up in his behavior? Or, or was it this, uh, a tweeting well, Don't you think that would with, have been found already by yeah. this point in time? Uh, yes. That's that's why it's so surprising. Right. Because it sounds like it was something crazy that was going on, mm -hmm. maybe with some uh, tweeting back and forth with some people, and all of a sudden, but that's not how he lived his life or how he treated his teammates or, or people or women or friends or anything because it was it was uh, so not him. And so I, I, I think they're going to have to double, triple check and make sure that uh, – he is who they think he is, right? And and so, and it's and it, it would be a shame if he starts sliding like crazy because of something like this without great explanation. It's unfortunate, man. It's like who so, who who dug this stuff up from uh, eight I, years ago? And then it and then it comes out uh, again the night before the draft, and it's oh. something that again I'll be talking about with Michael uh, with Mike Freeman of Bleacher Report next hour. Mm. Give us the latest on his draft status. And David Shaw of Stanford's going to join us. Uh, as well as he coaches in your old neck of the woods yeah. there, and uh, yeah, we're neighbors in uh, in Stanford. Um, so, there's a good Druckenmiller story that you can actually tell here on the Rich Eisen show. No, there's some good Druck stories, but I, I'm not going to tell all of them. Or, well, we've got. About I will tell you this: you, okay. you can you can yeah. you can appreciate this, but I will tell you that Jim Druckenmiller, yes, from Virginia Tech, is probably the reason why we didn't pursue and draft your guy from Michigan. Tom Brady? Yeah. What? Oh, okay. what? You say what? You need an explanation, right? Okay. Please. So here's what happened. We, we drafted Druck, I don't know, 28th pick in the draft, right? Late in the first. And, and we still had Steve Young. And we, as coaches, figured, well, we got to make this guy one of our, one of our quarterbacks that can do what we do in the West Coast offense. And, and, and in the West Coast offense, you like to move those guys. Steve Young is Baker Mayfield size pretty much uh -huh. okay so you move him you don't let him play from the pocket the entire game you you, you change the launch point and you in you, your movement and play action and keep package is very diverse all right well we learned that that's not drucks deal okay he's not going to be able to do it you'd have to play from the pocket you're right. a strong guy so i'm you know, finding a very way. pretty girlfriend and all that stuff right yeah, no. okay so so ah, ah. so um we ended up releasing him and deciding that we don't want to go down that path again with the, the category of drop back passer, which Tom Brady was in, Rich, and more of the athletic kind of mobile guy that runs fast. I had no idea Carson Palmer ran four six five. I had no idea either. You could have knocked me over for the feather. So you went with uh, the the future goat shepherd in <laughs> Giovanni Carmazzi instead. Okay, Is I don't want to sit here and defend Gio Carmazzi. All right. Oh, you trapped him because he's an Italian guy, right? So. This kid was a road scholar. This kid was the point guard in the basketball team. This guy was a four six, four seven athlete. He was a, he was all of that. He was like whoa, whoa, whoa. And it's like, hey, but, but we you're can, defending Giovanni Carmazzi. Said, right? we, said, we said we can mold this guy. We can mold him into one of these guys. And he, we're not in a hurry because Steve's going to be around another ten years. Well, he, you know, he, he, he was short in the confidence and intangible mm. part of it. A little short. Yeah. By the way, Molding Giovanni, it was a great uh, movie from the makers of Howard Ten. <laughs> Molding Giovanni. Uh, it, it, it was a little bit too art housey for me, Molding Giovanni. To be honest with you. Good job, Mooch. <laughs> <laughs> How do we talk about one goat, of the Brady goat six. farmers? Oh man, uh, love you, man. Love you, man. Thanks for Listen, coming by here. Yeah, I'm going to use this suit because I have a show. How to do. old is that photograph on your on your? I told Alex on the way here. I said this is this was taken like the second day I was on board 13 years ago. Look Can you change that. my photo? You look. You haven't changed. You haven't changed. You might not uh, even. I mean, with my photo, I might not even be let in the building on my credential. You but. guys like this rich eyes and beard kind of scruffy look or not? Oh, yeah. I'm just saying that. The fans wow. love it. It's part I of the told, experience. I told Shut them to shave down. hour three coming up. The Rich Eisen Show, weekdays at noon Eastern on Audience.